Well, hello, and welcome. I am Tim Moran, president of the Big Canoe Board of Directors. We have the rest of the board here as well. My fellow board members and I would like to thank all of you for coming today. This day has been a long time coming, and we can't wait to share the exciting details of this set of ideas. But first, some perspective. For 50 years, Big Canoe was created and maintained by some visionary individuals with bold ideas, starting, of course, with Tom Cousins back in 1972. They built the golf courses, a clubhouse, Doug Lake Pettit, created neighborhoods, and on and on. What we have today in our amazing community is largely the result of decades of the big, bold ideas of those visionaries. But today, we control our own future. We now own all of this by virtue of being members of the Property Owners Association. So today, we have new visionaries, and those visionaries are you, the property owners. Through the voice of community survey, you spoke and said you wanted a community that is updated and well-maintained, that enhances our lifestyles with improved facilities and upgraded amenities, all the while preserving our unique natural setting. What you will hear today is the result of your wishes being translated into actionable projects, many of which have been talked about for years. Bold ideas, visions of continued greatness. This is just the beginning of what will become a steady program of continual improvement using your input as well as strategic and long-range plans produced by dedicated communities of your fellow property owners. In fact, at this time, we want to thank the various members of the Strategic Planning Committee, the Long-Range Planning Committee, and the Finance Committee. These dedicated residents have spent countless hours working on bringing these ideas to life. Will anyone who worked on one of these teams please stand so we can recognize your contributions with a round of applause? Let's give them a hand. Job well done. So out of all the bold ideas you'll hear about today, two specifically will require a vote from the property owners of Big Canoe to move forward. Certain capital projects require a positive property owner vote to proceed. You will hear about these shortly. We, the POA board, as well as the staff and operational team, will be asking you for a yes vote on those projects because we believe that you got it right. You want Big Canoe to be all that it can be, both now and for our future. It's time to renew Big Canoe. Our meeting today is just the beginning of comprehensive communications that we will be providing regarding Renew Big Canoe. You have made it, may have noticed when you came in, there was a Renew Big Canoe notebook and pen on your seat. We hope you will use this notebook to jot down any questions or comments you might have about Renew Big Canoe as they occur to you during this presentation. Then immediately after the program, 
take those questions or comments and head to the gathering area just outside the chapel doors here for a chance to ask your questions directly to the people who worked on the details of those projects. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to our general manager, Scott Auer, to take you through the details. Scott? Can you all hear me? Okay, Paul, am I, am I live? Good. I lost a bet this morning, and I am so glad I lost the bet. I uh, bet Mark Green that we would have plenty of room in the back, and we have no room in the back. We have no room in the balcony. We have no room downstairs. Thank you guys for coming. This is a really, really big, important day for Big Canoe, and you gave up your Saturday morning to be here, so thank you. We appreciate it. Renew Big Canoe. I love this logo. In the, isn't this a neat logo? Uh, you, you've, got, you've got the mountains, a big canoe that we all love over there. You've got bright green, kind of what you see in the spring when everything's coming out around here. You've got some dark green, which is what it sort of looks like in the summer. And you've got these three great words, preserve, enhance, and prosper. And you're like, well, that's a beautiful logo. But Scott, what, is that, what does that logo mean? What does that mean to us? So I don't like to read slides, but this one I'm going to read. By renewing key areas of Big Canoe, we can preserve the value of our physical assets, we can enhance the property owner experience, and we can ensure that our community continues to prosper. So you've got renew, you've got preserve, you've got enhance, and you've got prosper. I don't know about you, but that, that looks like a really good place to live to me. And if I was shopping, all kinds of different communities, I'd be pretty excited about reading that mission statement. But what is it? Is it something we're starting today? Is it something we, uh, we have to look forward to? Sometime in the future, we can renew Big Canoe. What, what are we really saying? Well, Renew Big Canoe is a journey, and it's a journey that we've been on for about three years. We just didn't have a really good logo and a name for it. But we've been on the path already. So you can see signs of renewal everywhere. You can see the new seawall that we replaced at the beach club and how that's ready to last for another 50 or 75 years. You can see, this is not too sexy, but you can see the trash facility, which no longer looks like a NASCAR advertisement. It used to kind of look like NASCAR-ish. And on top of that, we made it safer, so we added another lane, we added some additional capacity, and you know, it's, it's not, that, not that wonderful, except we all use it. I use it about three times a week. I don't know how I do that with two people, but we, and a cat, but we do. We use it about three times a week. And it was number one on the, on the uh, strategic planning survey. Everybody said we really want the trash uh, facility improved, so we did. This is one of my favorite places now. In Big Canoe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. Uh, un unbelievable change in what used to be just kind of an isolated shack. Now it's the Sunset Terrace, I hear it called. It is the, um, it is the place to watch eagles and to watch sunsets and have charcuterie boards and have a glass of wine with friends. That's what Renew Big Canoe is all about. This is uh, Walls. Uh, the rock slide has never looked like that ever. Um, Lydell and company just did an amazing job getting that done. And all the retaining walls, the wooden retaining walls around here, we're replacing them one by one by one by one um, with stuff that'll last forever. I don't know who the guy is with the scissors. <laughs> Terry looks a little worried, but that was, the, uh, that was the grand opening of the Racket Club, our oldest building. So talk about renewing Big Canoe. A lot of communities probably would have torn it down. They would have said, ah, that building, eh, whatever, it's all un unlevel. There's joists hanging off underneath. You know, what are we going to do with it? We didn't. We basically said that's part of why we're here. That's part of our DNA. It's part of our history. We want to make it better. And we made it better. So that building is now very set, very stable, very fun, all kinds of great merchandise inside. And it's one of the best views. It's kind of a, a kept secret in Big Canoe, unless you're a tennis player. Uh, we'll be doing more and more up on that patio. So again, that's what Renew Big Canoe is all about. 
And then this is from last weekend, right before the throngs arrived, and they did arrive. Um, a lot of people told me the Beach Club has never looked that good. So new sand, new furniture, pool updated, all kinds of lovely banners. We replaced rotted wood, um, everything. Again, how do you take something that we have as an asset and make it better, rather than always thinking about tearing something down and replacing it or whatever. And you can even taste the difference in Big Canoe now. Um, I've been here almost three years, and I have never had so many wonderful comments about the clubhouse from everybody. So we've made huge strides in service. Mahila has really changed the front of house. The food is now very consistent, very hot, very wonderful. That's part of Renew Big Canoe as well. So you say, Scott, that's great. I love it. Terrific. What's next? Where do we, where do we go from here? So uh, being kind of the smart people that, that the board uh, usually is, they basically um, <laughs> created a strategic planning team about, a, you know, I don't know, two years ago. And the first thing we said is, let's go out and talk to the property owners. The property owners know what we want. Let's go find out. We don't need to sit in a conference room and pontificate about what maybe we want. So we went out and we did that. And we all spent a lot of time. It took about 40 minutes to do that survey. We got thousands of them back. And what everybody said was, we really believe in upgrading and keeping our amenities up a notch and improving the property owner experience. And first was fix the trash facility. Okay, so it's, it's better. Clubhouse came out as number two. Everybody said that really has become the heart of a big canoe. It's what we, it, it's our social center. It's part of our fabric. We need that improved. Postal facility, again, not too sexy. Um, you know, postal facility is a postal facility, but there's some problems in the postal facility. And we're gonna talk about that. That came out as number three. And then there was kind of a, a drop from there and you know, eventually, yes, please do something about wellness. Look, keep improving Beach Club. You've seen we've taken some steps on that. So we, we take this stuff really seriously, and it's a roadmap for our budget. It's a roadmap for what staff works on, and it's a roadmap for Renew Big Canoe, as you're going to see. So postal facility. The building's kind of old. It's, it's been there a while. It doesn't look too bad, right? I mean, it's, it, it's how, you know, mail. You get, go once a day and you get the mail. Well, let's, let's pull back the covers a little bit and look a little bit deeper. This is what I call the slalom course. <laughs> so if you go to the post office anytime between like 11 and two, um, if we got more snow here, you could learn to ski slalom. Um, but that's, that's, that's our parking lot. And those, um, those, those vans tend to take the best and pretty much the only level spots we've got in the entire parking area. And it's not that safe of a situation. There's been some really close misses. There's probably been a few that haven't been missed that I didn't hear about. Um, but it's not the best situation. Second thing, so lots of, uh, lots of uneven surfaces. We live on a mountain. Um, that is probably the only place at the time they had to put a post office. And there's all kinds of wonky ramps and, and, and stairs and uneven surfaces. And we do the best we can to throw asphalt on things and patch things and whatever. But it is not an ideal parking facility by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you can't see this. This kind of looks flat. But if you were actually out there, it, it looks like that. Um, the reason those guardrails are there is because we had two cars go over the side. So um, again, not the best not really worthy of Big Canoe, I think, and the other things that we've been doing in Big Canoe. This is a handicap ramp, and the handicap ramp's not bad, but you could kind of do a soapbox derby coming out of that <laughs> handicap ramp. So, you know, great ramp, but it's not going to a great place. So again, that worries me, that, that's not ideal. This is an uneven floor. Uh, floors shouldn't look like that. Uh, the racket club used to look like that. So there's, there's probably some stuff starting to happen underneath that building, which is less than ideal. So do we want to keep pouring money into something that's old with a whole bunch of problems, or do we have a better idea? Also, alpha boxes, they've been here since before email. Well, you, that used to be email. 
Um, the, the funny part is we use them. They're, they're really handy if you're doing thank you notes and cards and invitations and, and writing a check for somebody or something. They get a lot of use. The problem is at 30 new houses a year, we are almost out of box space. So if we keep the existing facility, those are going to go away because there's nowhere else to put more boxes. So we would rather have them not go away. So we have a better idea. We'd like to go from this to something that looks a lot more like that. And this, just to get you set, um, I like the reaction because that's kind of what I think too. Uh, this is the uh, Village Station A and B, which is right there. They kind, they kind of line up. And we have all this beautiful space next to it. And so after a lot of thinking, a lot of planning, long-range planning committee took very, very seriously the character of Big Canoe. We did not want to tear down a bunch of trees. We did not want to build a lot of parking lots. We did not want to have empty buildings sitting around that weren't useful. How can we use the assets we have to fix the problems we have? And so working with some really good architects and exploring lots of different solutions, this came out as number one. So an entire addition, one story addition, gets built onto the package porch. You have one nice lobby. You have some of the flattest parking in Big Canoe is sitting right down here. We can extend some of that with retaining walls and we get the mail trucks off to the side. So the slalom course is not there anymore. And if you want to zip in a little further, what that would look like would be something like this. So one lobby, so imagine one stop, you drive, you get out of your car, it's raining, you go into the lobby once. You don't have to do that twice and go down the hill and pick up your package and all of those things. There's a Priscilla's spot right there. So you go in, if you've got a package to pick up, the packages are over here. We've extended the space and we reserve room for future expansion. If, if and when we can ever talk Amazon into coming back, uh, we have more room for lockers and things of that nature. But we have more room right now for packages because e-commerce continues to grow like that as well. And then we've got all of the boxes plus room for over 20% expansion over what we currently have. And yes, we're preserving the alpha boxes. They don't go anywhere. And loading dock again, way off to the side. So we can do that in the space we have, tying in to a building we have, and give us a much better daily experience. And you know, post offices aren't that exciting, but they sure get you know used an awful lot. So it's something that uh, I think is worth improving our daily experience with. So that's one that we need all of us to make a decision on. So it came up pretty high on that strategic planning survey a couple years ago. You see what we can do, but it's gonna require a vote later this summer from the property owners saying, yes, we want to invest, we want to make that a reality. And so that will be something we'll be asking for later in this summer. Next, one that was pretty high on the survey. Even through, the, uh, through kind of the fog and the green, uh, you see this beautiful building. It's a beautiful building. It's in like one of the most beautiful spots in Big Canoe. It's, it's, we, all, we all walked through the bridge, got smitten when we drove through there, usually met our realtor in the clubhouse. I sat there with Cindy. We looked out the back windows of the Black Bear Pub and said, oh my Lord, what an incredible place. Could we ever live here? This is beautiful. Many people have that same experience. It's, it's a gem on the outside. Let's talk about some of the challenges we have on the inside. So this is another slalom course. This is the employee slalom course. So we get our own at the post office. The, empl the employees get their own at the clubhouse. So um, Black Bear Pub, Veranda, it was never meant to be in the original design the way it is. So you imagine it's a Friday afternoon, Friday evening, Saturday. The Black Bear Pub is filled and you're a course server and your, your clients are out there on the veranda, you're running drinks, you're running food, you're trying to navigate. It, it's less than a pleasant experience for our employees and it kind of hurts our, our service standards a little bit. Next problem we have, 
Everybody loves the veranda. The veranda is one of the most beautiful places in Big Canoe. Um, the problem is, you see that, that kind of halo, that's called sunshine. Um, it gets really hot out here. This was actually a patio party, and the problem is nobody's on the patio. <laughs> They're all in the veranda because that's where the fans are and that's where it's uh, undercover. So we have this great patio, this wonderful view. It doesn't get used like it really should. This is by the hostess stand, so setting up a buffet because we don't really have that much room on a busy day or a busy event to set up buffets, so you end up with a big line that's going into the Black Bear Pub. Again, you've got to cut through that line to get out to the veranda, and if you're coming in to get seated or something, it's, it's a bit awkward. Plus, if you're trying to move up to the bar to get something, it's a bit awkward. So not the, not the perfect layout. And this was, uh, this was just a couple weeks ago. This was uh, a wonderful event that the Bear Society had to celebrate the Trails Committee that we all love. And I was there, and I'm trying to talk to a few people. You could not hear people like within a foot of you. That, that room is just so, so loud. And if it gets busy, now you know, you're, you're kind of pushing through, so, sort of like swimming upstream um, to try to get to the bar to try to get uh, served. So again, not the ideal layout. We're starting to outgrow a lot of the things we already have. So imagine that instead. So that is the Mountains View Bar. So the idea is, way back when, when the clubhouse was designed, the Mountains View Room, that was supposed to be the primary eating place. Why was that? Because it had the best view in Big Canoe. You've got all the mountains there. You've got the lake, you've got a great view of Creek One, so you can watch everybody hit into the water. It's really fun, <laughs> fun. yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, so what the architect has designed is this becomes an indoor-outdoor bar. So much, much bigger space, so way more room than we have in the Black Bear Pub. Behind the bartender, all those walls open up, and I'll show you a view from the outside in a minute. So it becomes an indoor-outdoor uh, bar experience. We have the hostess stand over here, which is good. Probably never thought about this. Our existing hostess, if she's there, she can't see the veranda. She can't see Sconti. She can barely see what's happening in Dogwood. And so she's running all the time back and forth. So when we come in, we say, oh, well, there's nobody at the hostess stand. That's not supposed to be that way. The hostess stand is supposed to be able to see the rest of the restaurant. So we fixed that so she can see the restaurant and see what's happening in the bar. And you also have some beautiful space where you can sit and wait for your table, just grab a drink with friends, have a quick business meeting, whatever you need to do. And of course, the, the architecture that we love, why, why change it? It's great. We're just basically enhancing the experience that we already have. This is the view now of what it will look like from the Duffer's patio. So you see we've added this very large wraparound terrace, because again, it's the best side of the clubhouse, and it sits empty almost every day, unless we're having an Easter or Mother's Day buffet or something like that. So it brings that whole side to life. So think of that, the double row seating out here here, I'll show you a little closer in a minute. That's the indoor-outdoor bar. New steps that go down from that terrace down to the cart barn. So when you finish 18, you can see who's up there, and you can like, mm, I'm coming up, right? You don't have to think about, like, wait a minute, Black Bear Pub, what's over there? I don't know, I'm parked in the wrong place, whatever. Um, you just go right up and have a drink with your friends, talk about how well you just did, how many holes you just birdied. Um, that's a beautiful thing. We also added right here, this is the, we had to do a fire uh, switchback staircase here. Um, so we added a patio there. So think of that as uh, kind of the patio that we have now behind the veranda. That is closer to the lake. Great place for soft seating. Great place for like a fire pit, a nice place. So you know, you finish dinner, grab another drink, sit down there with friends, sit in front of the fire pit and have, you know, watch, watch the, Mountains get darker, it's beautiful. So here's a, here's a closer view of what that looks like. So again, indoor, outdoor, you're looking back into the mountains view room at that point. 
double rows of tables along here. All of that has got uh, ceiling fans to keep us cool. It's also all got heaters to make this a really good long three season space that we can use. This is Sconti Room. So you're coming in from the new Mountains View bar over there. This is the new Sconti Room. It's been, it's been uh, changed so that these are all nano walls. They open. So again, more indoor, outdoor. That's, that's who we are at Big Canoe, right? We all came here because we love nature. We love the environment. It's a part of our DNA. And yet we, we sit in spaces that have, you know, enclosures and windows and why would we do that um, with mountain breezes and beautiful weather. So all of this becomes an openable door. You have all new access here to the covered patio that we just talked about. And fireplace is perfect, why change it? So in the winter, you just close up those doors. This becomes our main dining room, quite honestly. It's the best room we have in Big Canoe, and we almost never use it. People are always like, can't we eat in front of the fire? Can't you open up that dining room? Yeah, we can, but it's not really served well by the kitchen. Again, we can't see it. The hostess can't get there. The food runners are all running around the building. This fixes all those problems. So this kind of becomes our main dining room connected to the Mountains View room. This is the veranda. This is just the last couple weeks on the veranda. Uh, this, was a, uh, this was a comedy show that just happened. It was standing room only, kind of like today. Um, they're having to do it in three sessions, I've heard, because there's so many people that want to see it. We're outgrowing our veranda. So it was not really designed for what we're using it for. Uh, to you know, way, way, way back. It was an open air patio way back when. Uh, so you're looking at bands and events and the Bear Society does all these wonderful things and you've got now comedy and you've got um, uh, theater groups that are forming. I mean, we're, we're becoming, it's great. We're becoming this very, very wonderful active community and we've got so few places to use. So we'd like to fix that too. This is the new veranda. So we basically almost doubled the space. And all of that, that's kind of where it ends today on those posts. So all of that is new roof and new space. This is not set up for a Bear Society event. Bear Society events don't look like that. This would be, um, this would be set up for a property owner wedding, perhaps. You can do board meetings there. Ridge Runners can have their meetings there. Wildflower Bunch can have their meetings there. The theater group can do a performance there. We can have lectures and stuff with theater seating. The veranda then becomes our community room. It really is the place, so we don't always have to, you know, the chapel's so kind to us, but we can only use this room a couple times a year. That becomes our room that we can use all the time. All those windows and everything, again, the same kind of doors that are on Sconti room, all that opens up so that we get the cross breezes and stuff. But this is now a four season room. So it's air conditioned and it's heated and it has the operable windows. So we can use that year round. Not like today where if it's too cold or whatever, you drop in the, the sides and it's kind of okay, but you really can't hold a big meeting out there. You can't really hold a big event. So let's look at the floor plan a little bit. Anything in uh, blue is something that's gonna be modified. Anything in yellow is new. So again, long range planning principle was take what we have and leverage it. How, you know, we don't need to tear down a clubhouse. It, it's got great bones. It's just not quite being set up and used the right way. So you'll see a lot of blue on all the pictures because that means we're reusing and modifying what we have and then changing some things, adding some good things with yellow. So starting on this side, we're expanding the restrooms. Um, if we're going to have more events, we need more expanded restrooms. The veranda gets kicked out that far, so you can see how much more space we're actually providing for the veranda. Its own little covered entry. So right now, again, things are kind of weird because this is sort of designed to be our main entry, but we're usually coming through a place that doesn't even have like a place to take off your, you know, put down your umbrella or something. So a little covered entry here. Black Bear Pub is fun. Black Bear Pub stays, it will always stay. That's really part of our DNA. But it becomes a flex room. 
So now, if you're having a meeting, if you're having you know, some kind of a, either an event or maybe it's just an acoustic showcase, could be here, and before acoustic showcase, Black Bear Pub can be serving special things, special drinks, wine, beer, cheese and crackers, whatever, whatever that group wants can now be served out of Black Bear Pub. Also, that can become a private dining room. So think about, think about uh, birthday parties, think about anniversary parties with your friends. Um, actually, you would be able to reserve a private dining room and get you know, your own menu and served in what today is the Black Bear Pub, so you're not part of all the, the fun that's going on on the other end of the building. On the main hallway, we bring back an office. There are no offices on the, on the second floor of the, uh, of the clubhouse, which is really hard for that lovely lady, Mihaela, that you saw her picture. Uh, she has, her office is all the way down, down these steps and tucked under back in here somewhere. So if she's working um, the main room and she's also trying to get some scheduling done or get some invoices coded or something like that, she really can't do it. So there needs to be an office. We bring that back. We put some storage over here. So some of this is wine storage controlled and some of this is just storage storage. Not anything really changes with the kitchen restroom. We did a kitchen renovation. We've already been down that road. We did it in 2019. There's a few little pieces of equipment that need updating or something, but the basic kitchen is in good shape and it's the right size and it can serve everything we're talking about. And we still got the whole downstairs kitchen as well. So we don't really need to deal with that. Mountains View Bar is, you can see in size now, how long it is. So much, much more seating. All of that wall again opens up, covered terrace wrapping around the building, new set of stairs that ties it in with the cart barn, new terrace here where you can have that wonderful fire pit sitting. Scotty room gets modified with indoor, outdoor windows all the way around. Dogwood is still dogwood. It's a, it's a flex space for us. It can be part of this restaurant. These walls open and close. So that can be part of here or it can be actually tied to something that might be happening over here. So it gives us more flexibility. And again, the best views, the best, you know, everything about the building was really designed for this side to be used. And we're doing it backwards. And it also gives us now this beautiful community room that we desperately need as a community. This is uh, what it would look like with a whole bunch of tables. So all the seating that we used to have on the veranda, on the patio, in the Black Bear Pub, all of that seating has moved into here. It, it's roughly the same, pretty much, just on the right side of the building. And again, this can be set up for theater seating. It can be set up for dancing. It can be set, set up for a performance. It can be set up for a property owner wedding, which is the way it's set up in this picture. Black Bear Pub, same thing, can be set up lots of different ways. So this really becomes our community center. It becomes not only this you know, fabulous up-to-date restaurant, leveraging our amazing views and our, our beautiful scenery, but it also becomes truly the community heart that we've been sort of trying to use it for, but it keeps getting in the way of all the other dining that we're trying to do. So this fixes all those problems and a lot of time with, uh, with architects and long range planning uh, and finance people have been spent on figuring out those, those drawings that we have in front of you. So that one definitely will go up to a property owner vote later this summer. So we'll be asking you to vote yes for the post office and asking you to vote yes for the clubhouse renovation. Let's talk about golf for a second. There's another nine holes, used to be called the Valley Course, now it's called Choctaw. And Choctaw looks pretty great. It's beautiful, it really is. It's like, I, I live in Choctaw, so I walk this golf course whenever I can walk this golf course. And uh, it, it's terrific looking, <coughs> except for when it rains. So this is that same fairway, this is Choctaw 3, and uh, Rich McLeod could probably do a model boat regatta right there. Um, and it looks that way because uh, it has a few problems. Oh, I should show you a little more. So you're really not supposed to have a water hazard on a green. 
We, we have a water hazard on the green, and we have a river running through it. That was the name of a movie or something, right? I think river running through it. There, there we go. Um, that's it. And of course, these sand traps were never designed. They used to design sand traps a different way. So these guys are getting washed out all the time whenever there's a hard rain, which drives Kevin Sams and the maintenance guys kind of nuts. Um, and, and speaking of, they're digging. Why, why are they digging? They're digging because of that. Scott's favorite material in Big Canoe, corrugated metal pipe. Yes, we had it under Disharoon Dam. Yes, we have it in under all of our culverts. Yes, we just replaced it over at the beach club, carrying a stream underneath the patio. We have it all over our golf courses. That was a big part of the creek renovation. It, it is the main part of Choctaw renovation. We have that terrible stuff in that terrible condition underneath all of our fairways and around our greens. And that's a catch basin, that's what condition that's in, which is why that water that you saw draining doesn't really have a place to go and to get carried off. So it just sits there. Um, the, the catch basins are not in good shape. This is a sprinkler head. Sprinkler heads are not supposed to sit there and bubble all day. So that's a big waste of water. And it's also supposed to be able to throw like, I don't know, 50 yards, 100 yards or something. And it would be really nice, like on Creek right now, we can not waste water. We can just water the areas that need it. It's all programmable. It's very high tech. Choctaw is not that way. You turn it on, you turn it off. It floods everything. It's just kind of the way they used to do it. Um, and it's sort of being held together with bubble gum. So between, between the irrigation and between the, all the old corrugated stuff, we really have to renovate Choctaw. And because it's a maintenance project and an infrastructure project, and we're not talking about major enhancements to the golf course, that one the board has approval authority on. So that's something that they will be taking up later this summer as well. But the infrastructure underneath Choctaw is no different than the infrastructure under our roads or under Disharoon or under Disharoon Dam or something. We gotta fix this stuff. It's way <coughs> too old and it's failing every day. <coughs> Next one, administration. And you say, Scott, why are you showing the chimneys with the word administration? I have a reason for that. So way back when, when we did that strategic plan, we came up with all these high-level strategic objectives. There were five of them. One of them is our employees. Just in case you don't know, about 60% of our annual budget goes to labor. We are a service company. That's what we do. So the idea was we need to treat our employees really well because without our employees, we've kind of got nothing, right? They, they take care of everything that happens here. So create a culture that attracts and retains engaged and motivated employees. Well, that sounds good. I'd, I'd like to work there. That sounds like a good place to be. This was Christmas Day. So when I get a call on Christmas Day that says you better get to the chimneys now, that's not a good call. And so uh, Scotty Patterson and I are walking through the building on Christmas and literally the ceiling is falling down around us. So you've probably all heard the story of the, the great freeze, the sprinkler systems. Many, is, many of us dealt with it in our houses. Uh, we dealt with it there. And uh, as a result of that, that was the accounting office. So that's where all of our accounting team were, and IT team was spending all their time. So you say, where are they now? They're in a conference room. So we basically took the only conference room, and we don't have many conference rooms. We took the only conference room we have in the public works building out by the North Gate, and that's now full of this. So um, in terms of attracting and motivating employees, uh, this, this is, a, this is a, at best a temporary situation. We need to get these people back into offices somewhere. We also, in case you don't know, we, my, my team is spread out all over Big Canoe. So you know, many of us grew up in corporate America, but the ideas of co-locating and, and talking and having ideas and driving efficiency and meeting at the water cooler and all of those things, that doesn't usually happen with us because it's, I gotta go set up an hourly meeting with Lydell or something because we're not in the same place. We don't run into each other. So um, also, all of our print shop 
where all the posters come from and all of our programs and flyers and stuff, all that used to be in the basement of the chimneys as well. That all got flooded. So now that's sitting in front of Regina's desk and uh, blocking off uh, uh, access to Ron's office. So it's kind, of, it's kind of a bit of a mess. Oh, and this is a closet. This is a utility closet in the canoe lodge uh, that is now Sherry's office from accounting because there wasn't even room for Sherry in the conference room that we stole from Public Works. So I don't even have accounting co-located anymore with accounting. So long range planning really delved into that. Part of why this meeting is today, honestly, rather than we were hoping it was going to be a few months ago. We had to solve this problem. So they looked and they looked around at all of, again, what assets do we have? What can we leverage? We don't want to tear down a bunch of trees. We don't want to go build a couple million, three million dollar brand new building someplace and have more sewer and parking issues and all that kind of stuff. So they looked at an idea that came up and they said, what do we look at the chimneys? We want to basically co-locate in a more professional atmosphere, something that we can set up to get all the employees in one place. Everybody knows the parking at the chimneys, it was one of the big objections when we last talked about, do we renovate it, do we, where do we put the community center that I just talked about in the clubhouse? It belongs at the clubhouse. It's much harder to make it work here because the parking is so bad on the upper level of the chimneys. It's very, very limited. But administration doesn't need that much parking. So kind of made sense to look at that repurpose existing facilities without disturbing our natural beauty. It's already there. We don't need to tear it down. The building's in good structural shape. It's, the inside just got toast, toasted. Partially funded through an insurance claim. That's kind of good. So we will be getting a good insurance claim from that building. We can use that dollars to rebuild the building, which we need to do anyway, rebuild it back in a different way than we had it before, reimagine it in a different way. And what the cool thing is, the great idea, the aha moment was, if we do that, then the entire canoe lodge can return to the property owners, which is one of our favorite buildings. And right now, it's always a bit of a conflict between employees and property owners and what can you use it for and what hours and what's booked for what and the conference room's already taken and separate church and state. Property owners get the, one of the best, coolest spots back in Big Canoe and we take over the chimneys and we gotta rebuild it anyway, so let's rebuild it back into administration. And what's so great about the, the lodge, you asked? Number one, it has a beach. There aren't that many buildings here that have a beach, but the employees are using the beach and we don't use the beach. So that doesn't make too much sense. It has a great patio for outdoor events. And again, we don't use that. It sits there. I walk around it a couple times a day just to get some exercise and it's a gorgeous spot. But we can leverage that more for property owner things. The main meeting space, it's not that community center I just talked about for the, uh, the community room I just talked about for the clubhouse, but it's a pretty good size. We do lots of nice things in there with Leadership Big Canoe and some different clubs. We'll have different events. There's an elections uh, event happening on Monday night that's over there. So that room is now totally dedicated to property owners. Plenty of parking. I don't need this much parking. This is actually pretty good parking uh, compared to what's over at the chimneys. So we'll take the sort of lousy parking and we'll walk from, the, from the, po the old post office if we have to, but property owners get the better parking lot. Sort of makes sense to me. And what we would do is something that looks like this. So we don't really need to touch this side of the building, just some refreshing, you know, new paint, maybe some new furniture. That furniture is pretty old. Um, you know, dress that up a little bit. But we can take this whole hallway and for very minimal dollars, actually, turn it into a series of different size meeting rooms. Because we always have this discussion about meeting rooms in Big Canoe. It's a little like golf. You know, there, there's a lot of golf capacity, but it's always at the wrong time. Nobody wants to tee off at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in August. This is the same thing. Um, you know, at, at uh, 6 o'clock on Friday night, you can get a meeting room in Big Canoe. It's just that nobody wants the meeting room at 6 o'clock on Friday night. So this gives us, you know, that room is what we currently use as our only real conference room now. That's a good room. 
and it gives us a, you know, a few other different sizes for different groups. And that's an easy change. That's just two by fours and drywall. It's not a big deal. So that way we fix the chimneys, administration solves a whole bunch of problems for administration, and the property owners get a whole new refreshed building with lots of better assets for property owners that employees would never use anyway. That one, board approval. So again, we're gonna have to redo the chimneys based on the insurance claim and, and keeping our assets up to date. The board can make those decisions about how we want to redo it and returning the lodge back to the property owners. And then the journey doesn't stop there. So this gets us through about uh, 2025, probably. So about the next, the next three years of activity, all the things that I've been showing you. But there's more. It's a journey, right? So this is kind of, we're taking this in phases. We're doing all the things we talked about already. This is the middle phase with two big votes required. And then in the future, we keep going. So wellness. Wellness is, is, is tight. It's, uh, our memberships are back up now to the levels before COVID. It's one of the main reasons when you read um, community management stuff, the reason that people choose communities now is based on fitness. We have this amazing trail system, right? And then you kind of go to the wellness center and it's like, well, it's okay. It's a little tired, looks a little dated. Getting a little, getting a little tight to do my stretching and stuff. We're gonna have to deal with that in the future. But we don't have a plan to do that. We need to get some really good experts to look at that. So that will be on the next horizon of planning. Wellness and beach club, they kind of go together because it's one parking lot and how do, we, how do we use both of those buildings or do we use both of those buildings, et cetera. Marina parking, marina parking is probably, I would say, worse than post office parking. Um, that's not good. So we've done all these beautiful patios. We've got new boats at the marina. It becomes a spot more people want to use and that parking can be really tough. <laughs> You know, you open the car door and it's coming right back at you, right? So um, we've all, all experienced that one. That's a big ticket item. It's a really tough location to try to get fixed. Um, so we have a bunch of engineering folks looking at that. Again, next phase, it, it's got to happen at some point, but not yet. And then, of course, golf. One more. There's nine more to do, right? So as soon as we finish the infrastructure on Choctaw, Cherokee... Luckily, it's got the same problems, it's got the same irrigation system, it's got the same corrugated metal stuff underneath it, but it's newer, thank heavens. So we have a ways, we can wait on Cherokee for a while. We can't wait much longer on Choctaw. But Cherokee, we can push off a bit. So that's in our long range plan for eventually we'll be talking about um, Cherokee as well. Hi. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. <laughs> so, this sounds really great, doesn't it? It really does sound great. I mean, I'm like, oh my gosh, I wanna live there, I wanna work there, I wanna play there. This is really, really, really good. Um, and I wanna be in the Mountains View bar later today would be really, really good too. But um, we have to build this stuff. And how are we gonna build this stuff and how are we gonna pay for this stuff? So, we had some really smart people Actually, they still are really smart people on the finance committee um, that a couple years ago saw all this coming. So they were working with us. They were working with long-range planning. And you may remember this in board meetings and things like that. But um, they went out and they secured unbelievable terms that you would never, ever be able to get today. So they basically got a... Uh, capital uh, fund, a capital uh, credit facility for us of up to $15 million of long-term financing uh, that is at, yes, that is not a typo, that is 3.46%. So we have a draw period, kind of like a HELOC would be, you have a draw period and then it converts to a fixed term loan. And when it converts to a fixed term loan, it's at 3.46%, which, you know, I'm, Amazing, right? It is. It's amazing. And they, um, you know, they had the foresight while that was still available 
to get it. You know, we've talked to Wells Fargo since then, and they're like, oh my gosh, we would never do that deal with you now, right? Um, and it has to be used for capital. Can't be used for labor, salaries, operating costs, anything like that. And the important thing is it doesn't need to be. All of the things that we do every day, roads, bridges, yes, the dam, um, culverts, all of the landscaping, everything like that is not covered by that money. That's covered by what we generate from our operating budget, what we as property owners pay on our capital assessment every month, and the uh, CCF. When we sell a house, obviously there's the buyer pays some money. All of that pays for roads, bridges, dams, culverts, our normal things that we do every year for replacement capital. This is special. This really is the renew big canoe bucket. And if you turn that into what does that mean to me as a property owner, it basically says compared to the debt we carry every single day that we pay down based on uh, previous things that the that boards had done, it turns out to be if we took all 15 million of that, it would basically be less than an additional $2 a month per property owner to service the new debt compared to the debt we're already servicing. So I'm like, I think that's a really good deal, right? We could do all of those things. And just to give you a perspective, everything I mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, including golf courses, including clubhouse, including the post office, it's about $14 million for us to do everything I've talked about this morning and do it over the next three years. It's about a $14 million investment in capital. And again, finance committee, was working with us, they knew where things were going, they went and got that $15 million at the 3.46%, and it comes out to be that when you do all of the math. There's a million questions you'll probably have, so we're not talking about, just kill it right now, we're not talking about special assessments, we're not talking about, oh, we gotta defer roads, we're not talking about, oh, we gotta fire people, we're not talking about anything like that. This is a special fund that was secured with Wells Fargo that is really tied to Renew Big Canoe. It's not tied to anything else that we manage every day. And you're gonna have a million questions. So don't think of this as the end. This is just, this is just the, opening, uh, the opening act. So first of all, there's this amazing website that's been created that's live now that's called renewbigcanoe.org has a ton of FAQs on it. We've tried to think, like if I was sitting here, what questions would I have? What do I want to know? All of those questions and answers that we can think of are on there. But the board is like, we want to hear from you, absolutely. So there is a place there you can ask questions. I didn't understand that. I thought Scott said this. What does that mean? All of that will go into Ask the POA. We'll be able to track it. We'll be able to respond to you quickly. We'll probably turn some of your questions into FAQs because if you're asking it, other people would probably ask it as well. So that, that uh, is going to be really important throughout the summer. Today, we've got tables outside. So if you want to learn more for, about the clubhouse, if you want to ask the chair of the finance committee, Bill Thurber, and our CFO, Jane Hagen, about more how the money works, it's out there, just stop by, grab another refreshment, hang out for a while. Um, you've got the same thing for the admin building. Everything we talked about, there's people out there who know this way better even than I do that are able to answer anything you want to know. Also, we're going to set up a series of presentations throughout the whole summer. The first one is June 24th. We have J.C. Chi, who is the architect, who's been working on those plans. J.C. Chi is with Quo, Dietrich, and Chi. They're probably the top clubhouse designer now in the probably the East Coast, certainly the Southeast. They keep winning awards all the time. So they're the guys that are working with us on the clubhouse renovation. So he will be here the 24th. We'll get a email out about that. You can register for it, and he'll be in the room, and he'll be walking you through. Here's what the other clubs are doing. Here's why I'm suggesting these changes. He'll be taking your input. Uh, that happens on the 24th. Bill Thurber um, will probably do several presentations. I have a feeling money will be a, a good topic to talk about, but uh, we have one on July 10th already booked with Bill. If we want to do one sooner, if y'all want more feedback sooner, um, Bill is like, yep, I'll do it. I'm not going anywhere in June, so 
uh, we'll set up another session to talk about finances. And then there'll be a vote. Like I said, those two big projects, which are the clubhouse renovation and the whole new post office, both of those require property owner votes. So there'll be a, there'll be a voting period that runs um, from probably early August to early September, and that will determine what we do about those two projects. And that's it for now. So. <laughs> So please, please uh, I think t Tim wants to say a couple more words, and then please head out, and, and uh, we thank you so much for coming. All right, thank you. Just one more note. Thank you, Scott. Hello. Thank you. Goodbye. That's good stuff. <laughs> well, the board, the committees, and the staff all want to hear your comments. Please join us out on the patio. We've got tables set up so you can discuss specific issues that are of interest to you. Go to renewbigcanoe.org and put your questions in there and your comments. We will listen. Thank you very much. Perfect.